Uh, hello, this is Einar from uh, Unity Web TV. Today uh, we have been on this uh, convention, uh, Evolving Consciousness uh, Conference in Unity Center, and uh, I was uh, at uh, con at uh, Jude's uh, lecture and was so fascinated. I think it was so important information she she has. Uh, Jude Carven, she is our guest today, and she is. Uh, it says Dr. Jude. What kind of doctor are you? <laughs> My doctorate's in archaeology. Archaeology. Yeah. But I have a master's degree in quantum physics as well. Wow. And you've also been in finance. <laughs> yeah. Between the two, I had a 25-year career in finance. But it's like, and all of our journeys, every step's purposeful. And what I realise, not at the time, but in hindsight, yeah. that every step sort of got me to this place. Yes. But I actually started at four years old because I was actually having experiences then that have really informed my whole life and continue okay. to Can you tell a little bit about that? Your experiences from four years old? Okay, well, I know when I was four, um, I was the daughter of a coal miner, so I grew up in the north of England, very working class, very grounded. You can't be more grounded than the daughter of a coal miner, can you well, really? Well, of course not. <laughs> um, but I, one night, I was just settling down to sleep and a discarnate light arrived in my room. And at four years old, you know, it's hey, you know, natural. I was yes. curious. <laughs> I was fascinated, and even more so when the light began to speak with me. And it really went from there. And I realised. Well, I began to dis how I describe it as walk between worlds. I started to have telepathic experiences, precognitive. I could see auras. I was clairvoyant, clairaudient, and that, as a four-year-old, that was the natural state mm. of things. And you didn't get stopped. No, we no didn't. No parents that says, oh, this is just bullshit. Oh. You know, that might have happened, not with my mum and dad, but it might have happened with teachers or friends yeah. or whatever. But, you know, it occur never occurred to me as a kid to tell anybody. Isn't okay. that strange? Somewhere. So, I, and because I never told anybody, I was having so much fun, and I never told anybody, nobody ever said don't. Nobody ever said okay. it's your imagination. You thought everybody else had the same experiences? For a long time I did. Yeah. For a long time I did, but because I didn't, speak of them, mm. it, it was much later that I realised that that was so unusual and I was so fortunate that I hadn't been sort of shut down by all of wow. that. And then you went through all these, uh, you've been uh, studying all your life, then uh, you, if you have uh, physics in quantum physics, you've been uh, a degree, you have a degree in archaeology, uh, what is that? Archaeology. Archaeology. <laughs> <laughs> and research. What it was though, it's I think the common denominator, the common thread, not just of my studies and my research, but my lifelong experiences and exploration, mm -hmm. is really to understand how the universe yes. is and it is, but more importantly why, and the nature of reality, an ever deeper and bigger understanding of who we really are. And what uh, changed, uh, when did you start to doing, uh, having workshops, lectures about uh, the consciousness of the world and all these things. So did something special happen or did you just uh, finish with all the other things? <laughs> well, it actually started, funnily enough, really early. Uh, I told a story yesterday um, about how when I was nine years old, you can think of this as, a, a you know, the working class coal mining community. And my mum invited the neighbours round to hear me give a talk on quantum physics. Oh. Now you can imagine these ladies really fascinated not by quantum physics, but my mum was a great cook, so she gave them lovely cake and tea, so they had a good time. Okay. So it started early, but it, it then, as, as we were saying, my life took the scenic route of the masters at Oxford University doing physics and then uh, business and, and becoming very successful in business and then really in my mid-40s feeling I was very I was the most senior businesswoman in the UK in the early 90s for a very short time <laughs> but I was there. And, and I got to the point where I'd done it all and I'd you know I'd, I'd felt I'd learned all I could learn in that I'd done it so often and I was getting bored <laughs> and I needed to move on and, and spirit if you like the universe was was tapping on my shoulder saying you know it is time to move on and that's what I found in my life when my passion for something or my energy falls away it's been my sign mm. all through my life to move on so that's when I left business and really 
moved on to this biggest chapter potentially of mm -hmm. my life of being in service to others and realizing by the mid 90s something big was happening folks mainly weren't aware of it some were but i could feel something growing and and it really for me was our evolving consciousness and i wanted to be in service to that i felt that was really what i came here to do mm. But what um, what I was really excited about uh, the lecture today is about uh, things we're working at, uh, at, at in the center here about uh, yeah. uh, helping people to get out of their traumas and all these things. Yeah. And then you come up with a, not a solution but also why we have traumas. And uh, you're talking about uh, karma and and uh, some of the traumas that kick in around four years old and then maybe 13 years old. Can you talk a little bit around these things? Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to. I mean, for us to evolve our consciousness, for us to move forward, it's like, it's like think of us on a personal level. If we're still holding, if we're carrying baggage mm. from the past, it can be very heavy and it can be limiting us in terms of our freedom, yeah? Mm. So as you're doing the work here, the wonderful work that you do at the Unity Center, you're recognizing that to empower people, to empower themselves, to help them move forward, um, they have to release the traumas of the past. And those traumas are really tied in with their experiences from the past, that then they've had an emotional, often, or almost always, an emotional attachment to, that they just haven't let go of. So all that stuff, all that emotional baggage often sort of becomes subconscious. And in my perspective, having worked as a personal healer as part of my own journey of, of understanding, is that when we incarnate, when we're born, um, we, in our very early years, or even in the womb, but certainly from the gestation through to sort of often four or five years old, we're emotional beings. We soak up, we're like sponges. And so often, trauma is triggered within someone at that early age. Um, and again, when we go through puberty, our hormones are aging. Mm. We're growing up, and that's a time again where that same trauma or that same emotional trauma can be triggered again. So by the time we're adult, it's in us. It's, it, we're, we're, we're holding it, mm. we're carrying it. Yeah. And working with other lives, having walked between worlds all my life, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll speak with anybody, you know, discarnate, ancestors, uh, everybody. And this sort of pattern, this sort of trauma can be played out life after life. And we bring into this life the residue of it that hasn't been released, and then we re-trigger it in this life. Mm. And I work with five, what I call archetypal traumas, because we each embody them, so they're personal. We each play them out slightly, you know, uniquely different, but they're also collective. So holographically, these archetypal traumas play out on personal, family, ethnic, national, collective levels. And they're really all of that experience of what it means to be human and feel, but not let go of the, of the baggage of what that is. So let, instead of letting emotions flow through us, we hold on to them. Mm. It's that holding on to them that creates the trauma. And my sense is this is a time, enough already, this is the time to release them because unless we do, as you're finding in the work at the center, people really can't move forward. But it's uh, for people that uh, doesn't believe in earlier lives, you, you mean the trauma is coming from, it's ongoing from earlier lives that you haven't finished working sort of. with it in another life and then it triggers in again until you understand it and acknowledge it and release it yeah, yeah. but i guess we have to take a step back whether you believe in other lives or not is you know we, we all know that we do hold it in this life mm. um but really we've been talking this weekend and i've been talking about the the the, the sense that to you know, a lot of folks are waking up a lot of folks are, are on this journey of awakening and and, and having experiences and you know, with help or on their own to, to heal and release this stuff. But often they don't have a bigger context to set all these experiences within. You know, they might be experiencing synchronicities, precognition, telepathy, all stuff that mainstream science doesn't explain, doesn't even go near, mm. let alone explain. Yeah. 
And so I think that as a scientist as well, what I'm really excited about is at this beginning of the 21st century, um, there is a, at the leading edge of science, there's an emerging cosmology which instead of the, the old mainstream science of, you know, everything's just materialistic, it's meaningless, it's fragmented, even though at the quantum revolution, the relativity revolution, we were given the keys, we were given the clues mm. to say that really isn't like it is. But now there's a whole big step forward into what's being called the holographic model, um, where everything is being seen as the same as spiritual traditions have described it, as ultimately whole and one. You call your centre unity centre. Mm. It's that unity of all that is that's being now embraced by leading edge science. And of course what it's doing is it's reconciling with spiritual traditions of, of the all ages. And so what I do as a scientist is I share that what I call whole world view. Because unless we have that perspective, unless we have that context, all our experiences, it's like now, where do we ground them? Where do we anchor them? What mm. worldview do we anchor them in? What paradigm do we anchor them in? So I'm truly excited because this is how I've experienced reality yes. since I was four years old. Yes. So I'm really thrilled that science is catching up with this. And it's the mystics of all traditions have described reality in this way. Yes. So it's a great context to, for the shift, for the evolving consciousness, this is what we need. Yeah. We're also talking about uh, this is not for only one and one person, it's also for the collective. Sure. And you're also talking about these uh, gestalts. Yes. Uh, There's five main uh, uh, gestalts, wasn't it? Well, I, I describe them as archetypal traumas. Yeah. And they're, they're very ancient. I mean, if you actually in scripture, in, in, uh, in the Bible, they were the traumas that Jesus suffered on the way to the cross, okay. which is very interesting because they're, they're universal. It's not, you know, it's not about one religion or anything. They're universal, but I find it fascinating that they're embodied within the, the if you like, the suffering of Jesus mm -hmm. and then his release, his transcendence from, from the suffering when he was able to release them and, and, and ascend. And they are abandonment, abuse, betrayal, denial and rejection. And because the, the whole world view is that all that we call reality is ultimately consciousness expressing itself energetically on many, many different levels of awareness and holographically, it means that those, if you like, those psychological traumas mm -hmm. Uh, are energized within our psyche and they come from experience and they come from our responses and especially emotional responses to experience and how we play them out and we play them out you know every one of those patterns those five patterns we do them unto others they do them unto us and we mm -hmm. do them unto ourselves so this is a time that having played them out at all the holographic levels, from the personal to the collective, my own feeling and guidance and, and work, in part, is empowering people to release those traumas from themselves and therefore be free to move forward. But does people have uh, one and one trauma that they're <laughs> working with, or do people have all of them? Or? I, I find some very greedy people who play out all five. <laughs> Most people, in my experience, mm. play out one primary yeah. uh, pattern and they play it out life after life. But there are folks who play out one or more. And of course, I've, I, in a, in a, it's very interesting to me actually because having played out a primary pattern that I've been aware of for many years, which was the betrayal pattern, I found that over the last few years, as my own awareness has continued to expand, that I've actually been finding, although they've been secondary within my own experience, the other uh, patterns have come forward okay, yeah. to be cleared and released. Um, and personally now, I'm onto the, the sort of the fifth pattern, as it were. So I'm, it's going to be interesting to see how other people experience that. But m the wider sense is that most people 
play out one primary pattern, and indeed nations. Yeah, that's also interesting. Collective, uh, yeah, yeah. Co on a collective level and national and ethnic and and family, of course. As yes, well as you talked about one example about how the Irish people took over one of their collective uh, gestalts <coughs> over to the U.S. when they wanted to escape from Ireland. Yeah. Where is from? Uh, well, it was after the potato famine, and there was a huge uh, emigration from Ireland, immigration to the U.S. Um, and I talked about the abandonment pattern, mm. the loss yeah. through the famine, the scarcity, and how when that isn't, when any of these archetypal, none of these archetypal traumas can be healed from outside, it's inner healing. You have to do it yourself. You have to go yeah, within yes. yourself and do it. But if you're not aware of that, you can try, as in this that particular case where the abandonment pattern was immigrated into the U.S. as it were, where it, the American dream was about getting stuff. Yeah. It was very much a materialistic dream. Yeah, they wanted to get the potatoes, potatoes, it, it, more food, potatoes, food. More potatoes, food, yeah, food, food. And then they food, thought it was something else. They it was money that. and it was consumer stuff or whatever. Yes. And of course, you, you never, it's a bottomless pit. You can never feed it enough. And I think that the inequality in the US and certainly some of the guys, you know, who've amassed a huge amount of money are maybe guys who still hold that abandonment pattern yes. profoundly within themselves. And you can't heal it in that way. You can only yeah. heal it from within. And when you release it, you don't need the stuff. You you need a roof over your head. You know, we're yeah. human. We're living in yeah. a human body. Yeah. We do need food. We do need a roof over our head and shelter. Mm. But we don't need billions no. of dollars. We don't need 15 houses. We don't need, you know, all the that goes with that. That's much more about trying to protect yeah. ourselves. That's a and trying to feed. That's a trauma. That's a trauma. All these people has... Uh, Bless them, yeah, I yeah. think it is. Okay, I want to say it. Uh, to heal a collective consciousness, is that uh, possible or do you have to take one and one person? Well, on the basis of the holographic model and the model, the spiritual model, of ultimately everything is interconnected, but it is very much leading edge science stuff. You know, Einstein, um, there's something called non locality, and within space time, but beyond and, and around and within the holographic model of the universe, everything is interconnected. And so the microcosm is part of the macrocosm, mm. and so everything connects with everything else. So on the microcosmic scale, it's about healing within and doing our own work, but now it's also about recognizing that these patterns are still playing out at the, the larger scales of the hologram. Mm. And they need attention too, because as we see in the Middle East, we see what's happening with, with Russia and the Ukraine and the EU at the moment and all sorts. Those conflicts are playing out at more collective levels and they're very, very dangerous still. And very, they don't serve our higher purpose, our highest purpose as a species. They certainly don't serve our, our, our purpose as children of Gaia and our relationships mm. with the other beings that are part of Gaia's consciousness and they don't serve our evolution. Mm. So it's about healing at those levels. But um, people that has, has these traumas and do the things over and over again, um, they need to get conscious yeah. about what they're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Because well, yeah, often it is, as you say, Ina, a lot of it can be, where the trauma happens, it's very real to somebody, mm. but, the re the, but then the responses are, are sublimated. They sort of go into a lot of our subconscious. And we might be sort of slightly aware of our patterns. You know, we certainly play them out in relationships, but we may not identify them as that. So, for example, someone with an abandonment pattern can be either very controlling in relationships or very needy in relationships or almost sabotage relationships you know they leave before they're abandoned mm, yeah. so you see it playing out but often people can't realize what it, it is they just that's their stuff that's what they're experiencing but in my understanding and certainly my experience more and more it's as though our higher self well, it isn't as though our higher self higher consciousness of which we're all apart that's who we really are it's like coming up to us and 
tapping us on the shoulder <laughs> and saying, Jude, it's time to sort of be aware of this. Yes. And we go, no, and we carry on and carry on. And then the tap comes stronger in our lives. It may be the breakdown of a relationship. It may be uh, an illness, a dis-ease. It may be a combination of events that are so blindingly obvious as to how we're, we're responding. Mm. But if we don't respond even then, really we can be sideswiped by life, by the universe, mm. by spirit, because it's not, you know, we, we talk about good and bad, it isn't. It's the opportunity to wake up. And when we do that, these things, this understanding bubbles up, begins to bubble up. And it's not so that we can play around it again, it's saying it's time to heal. Do you? I mean, do you get that in the centre that folks come and yes. they have that recognition, don't they? Yes. Uh, lots of people are talking about these things, but uh, especially in this uh, atmosphere at the centre here. But uh, I'm more occupied about all the other people that uh, still not woke up uh, or hasn't got this conscious feeling of that something they can do. I agree with you, and I, but I think. We, we, we need to see this whole evolutionary process as part of a universal evolutionary process of consciousness. And so just looking at it on the physical level, it's rather like when we look at an ocean and we see the waves on the surface. And if all that we understood about the ocean was the waves on the surface, we would understand nothing, really, mm. about the ocean. We would understand very little. So with my experiences of so walking between worlds for so long when we you know th there's a lot happening at other realms that is supporting us waking up first and foremost so it's like a tide within the waters of the ocean it's taking us somewhere okay mm -hmm. so that there's a much bigger picture of what's happening now. where is the wave taking us I hope and believe and trust that it's taking us to a higher level of consciousness personally but collectively. The other side is if we're all interconnected, which is the the, the sense that well the, the experience that I have, but where leading edge science is showing and spiritual traditions have always shown, that it's not an in a way it's not an arithmetic situation. Um, in the electromagnetic spectrum, yeah, of which light is a very small part, you have very uh, small wavelengths and very long wavelengths and turn it on its head long wavelengths have low frequency okay mm. small wavelengths are very energetic high frequency when we begin to wake up our frequency rises and the higher our frequency rises the more energetic it is so if you have a, a few people raising their frequency, it actually helps the rest. the rest. So the more we can work on ourselves and raise our own frequency from releasing trauma, from expanding our awareness, it actually raises the frequency of the entire collective. So that enables and helps and supports more and more people to be brought into that awakening mm. process. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, uh, in physics it makes sense. And in, and in metaphysics it makes metaphysics. sense. Okay. <laughs> and metaphysics and physics are just you know, high dimensional yeah. mm. reflections, yes. you know, themselves. Yeah. But um, there's so many things we could talk about, but uh, you're going back to the conference. Uh, anything. Um, maybe you should just go to the ending now. And I, I told you that you can tell the world something. <laughs> something uh, you feel is very important for the times coming now? Okay. I think it's actually very simple and we're really good at complicating stuff but it's really simple and I say this again and again is that you know very simply we make our choices in life on the very small choices we make and the very large choices we make from one of two perspectives from love or from fear and We've done quite a good job of both, but at the moment and crucially, I would really invite and encourage everyone to be more and more conscious of making your choices through love. 
and you know the the age, the teachers the great teachers have always told us this one of the f most the most fundamental uh, teaching in my view uh, in the world is the golden rule and it's not just in Christianity in some way it's in every spiritual tradition not religion spiritual tradition treat others as you would hope to be treated yourself and that means treat others with love and treat yourself with love and make your choices from love and that transforms the world it really is that simple that was a simple <laughs> such as but thank you very much Jude and it was a great having you here and I hope to thank see you again I hope to mm. please you know we'll come as we're invited we love to and well done you because you're doing some fantastic work here one thing before I go I would just invite you to continue to do that loving work with the with the with the square and, and just allow it to blossom because I know you're doing that all the time thank you I'll try to do that <laughs> <laughs> you will totally succeed <laughs> bless you bless you Thank you very much. Mm. And any time I can help or any time you'd like me to sort of do any stuff, okay. just let me know. <laughs>